Hello and welcome back to CEO.ca's coverage live from downtown Toronto. Gold is staying well above 2,500 and I'm joined today by Kelly Malcolm, CEO and Director of Borealis Mining. They trade on the Venture Exchange under the ticker BOGO, B-O-G-O. Kelly, great to see you today. Great to be here. Thanks so much. So let's kick things off with a quick elevator pitch. Uh, Borealis, new story on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Can you walk us through uh, some of the history behind that company? Sure. So like you said, we're newly listed. August 7th, we started trading under our fund symbol of BOGO. Um, we've got a really, really great board of directors, top-notch team. Please check out our website. They are all rock stars. Um, we've got a fully permitted mine in Nevada. We are able to pour gold, as evident by our most recent press release, uh, which separates us from 98% of the juniors listed on the venture, uh, so revenue generating. And we've got a project with wonderful historical drill results mm -hmm. that um, we, we're drilling at the moment, so I hope we can uh, hit some of those very, very great intercepts uh, going forward as well. Great. Yeah, I want to talk a, a bit more in a couple of minutes about that uh, gold pour and that strategy, but yep. maybe let's start with the asset. Uh, can you walk us through how, how do you acquire the Borealis mine and what made it so appealing? Sure. So um, we bought it in April of 2023 after doing a ton of due diligence. Um, it's kind of a story project. It was mined throughout the 1980s, fully reclaimed in the 90s, uh, was re basically rebuilt uh, in the 2010s or so, and then uh, suffered some, some um, financial difficulties, ended up entangled in a lawsuit for a number of years. After that lawsuit was settled, we picked it up from the vendor who was Waterton. Mm -hmm. um, they were to get about 20% of our shares as part of our transaction. Rob McEwen was presented the story and said he wanted to buy the entirety of their position. So he okay. basically bought the entirety of the vendor position. Uh, he's locked up on an escrow for 18 months. So long-term shareholder, uh, really, really yeah. worked. It worked out really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. I think having support from somebody uh, so well known, obviously a, a big signal to the market. Yeah. But uh, is, is Ron McEwen your largest shareholder at the moment or, or what's he the cap structure? He is the like? largest shareholder. He's got about 15 million shares. I'm up there with about 4.5 million. Uh, we've got people like Eric Sprott in there. There's nine different institutions. Uh, our, some of our, our directors and management own a million plus shares apiece. So mm -hmm. we've got a really, really good shareholder base. And basically half of our shares are escrowed at the moment. So okay. that limits how much stock is available for sale. Similar yeah. to what Newfound Gold was like, actually, if you look at that, mm -hmm. when that went live uh, in 2020. Okay. No, great to see that level of support. And I think, obviously, in junior mining, you have a lot of people looking at that insider holding as a you know, management having skin in the game. I've got lots of skin in this game. <laughs> uh, let's talk a bit more about the infrastructure on site. Uh, you know, I understand, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of work done over the past couple of decades at the Borealis mine. Yeah. And can you walk us through maybe some of the uh, historic results that we're seeing there and also some of the infrastructure that's in place that you're sure. able to use. Yeah, so we'll start with infrastructure. Uh, it's 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 a mine. It's it's fully done. We don't have to even talk really about what's there. It's It's got roads, substation, power, water, wells. Yeah. Uh, we're 20 minutes from the town. Uh, it's got a fully functional ADR facility, permitted functional heat bleach facility, permitted uh, and ready to mine pits. So it is, it's it's 100% Mm -hmm. In terms of infrastructure requirements and levels, we've got drill permits in place in, in a number of different areas in the project. Uh, in terms of historical results, there was 600,000 ounces mined through open pit oxide heat bleaching uh, through the years at about a grade of 1.7 or 1.8 grams per ton. Yeah. Um, recoveries excellent, better than 70%, uh, which is very, very good for a heat bleach operation. And uh, in terms of drilling results, they are some knockout holes. The best one is 69 meters of 16 grams per ton. Uh, that's within a sulfide body. In some of the, the pits that were mined out, there were oh, screaming 20, 30 gram per ton over multi um, tens of, of meters within the, the guts of the deposit. So okay. this thing delivers high grade. And then around those high grade um, cores, there's quite an extensive lower grade envelope, which is why the grade decreased when they're mining yeah. it, but it's nice because as, you, as you're doing pushbacks uh, and, and expanding your, your pits, you're still in ore, so you're still making capital. Instead of mining core and waste, you're mining core and then lower grade material yeah. as you go out, if that makes sense. No, of course, I think uh, 
it's no interesting to see. And I, I do want to actually go back on something you mentioned there that uh, you know everything is ready to go in the mine, but obviously there was you picked up the asset uh, after a lawsuit. Was, was mm -hmm. any of the infrastructure put on care and maintenance during that time, or it was all still operational? Both. So okay. under it, it was under care and maintenance, but under the terms of our permit. Um, to maintain our ADR facility, which is, by the way, for an ADR facility is where you process your carbon from a heat leach facility or heat leach program and essentially turn it into Dore bars. So we pour mm -hmm. our own bars in that facility. So to maintain the permit, we basically have to continue circulating solution, although we don't really put fresh cyanide on when yeah. it's in care and maintenance, but solution continually goes through the heat leach into the plant and we slowly accumulate gold. So You'll see uh, on some some companies they talk about residual leaching, and that's yeah. what that is. So it's not fresh cyanide; it. it's running it through the old heat leach pad. But you're still recovering gold through that care and maintenance period. So okay, yes, it's on care and maintenance, but not 100 percent on. Yeah, no, understood. There, there's actually, no mothballs in the in yeah. the closets. And so I, I imagine no big uh, you know capital expenditures to get things uh, get things running. Nil, basically, just just mobilization of of contractors and. Um, if we were to, to, to resume mining, it would probably be just literally that mobilization of contractors, capital to float the difference between um, when gold starts actually being poured and, and we get money from the refiners yeah. and paying the bills. So a couple million bucks, I think we well, could be back in production again. But let's talk about gold being poured. You've already put your, your first gold pour out. Walk us through uh, you know, how you're able to achieve that and maybe what we can expect going forward. Sure. So that was residual leaching, just what I was talking mm -hmm. about. So our last pour was in um, the early fall of 2023. And then we just let the, the, the carbon soak up that solution that was running through for eight or so months. Yeah. Uh, we, we have 10 carbon columns. So basically, they're kind of like a Brita filter that collects um, that gold laden solution. The gold drops out into the carbon grains. Mm -hmm. um, so we strip 2.5 of those 10 carbon columns. So we've got 7.5 more to strip. Um, so we'll pour all of that in terms of residual residual leaching in the coming weeks. And we've started to put cyanide onto our leach pad. So the gold grades will increase, the gold percentage of the bars will increase. Yeah. Uh, and what we're also looking at doing is bringing in a crushing contractor to crush a large stockpile that's right beside the heap leach pad. So we anticipate uh, I, I can't give projections, but we anticipate pretty regular pours, maybe on a multi, kind of monthly to biweekly basis for the next several months. Okay, fantastic. I mean, it's something that certainly sets you apart from uh, you know most other kind of juniors out there. Mm -hmm. um, walk us through the the vision behind that. You know, why are you going after this you know, production backed exploration rather than you know, going to the market like most people? Good line. I like that production backed exploration. So. Dilution. It's it's the it's the killer of of, of shareholder wealth, right? Um, like I'm a, I'm a huge shareholder of this company. Um, I'm watching the every every financing opportunity we get. We're looking at we're weighing the pros and cons of good people, good money, uh, yeah. what the price is, how to how to minimize that that effect that we have on existing shareholders. But the fact that we're able to produce revenue that that will give us cash that will minimize what we have to uh, dilute shareholders with, I think is is unique. Um, and something that uh, should benefit us going forward, provided we can we can maintain a steady stream of revenue, that will minimize dilution that goes into exploration, thus minimizing dilution that that shareholders um, are affected with. Mm -hmm. No, certainly something uh, I think people will be keeping an eye on, and I think very few people in a position to actually deliver on that strategy. Mm -hmm. So great to see right out of the gate that you're uh, you know pouring gold. I guess you know on that note, um, what, what are the contracts like in place? You know. In terms of uh, generating your know, cash flow from these gold pours, uh, walk us through. Do you have any deals in place for uh, you know, selling we, selling any of this? So uh, funny enough, um, we we got an article, we got a note and mention anyways in the Northern Miner uh, after we put that first pour out, and I have had twenty different refiners reach out because there's really? a lot of people okay. looking for gold. It's it's, yeah. it's surprisingly hard to um, to come by. I'm not sure if you tried to buy physical gold, but it's it's actually challenging to do. Yeah. You pay way more than spot. So what we're doing right now is we sell it to a refiner in uh, Salt Lake City. We take a, it's called a pin sample. So we have our bar, you drill, it's a pin. So a little tube of gold out, yeah. you assay that pin. 
and it tells you what your estimated gold content for that bar is. The refiner then does the same, so they drill their own pin. You kind of meet in the middle of your two assays, Got it. and then you sell it uh, on, basically you pick a, sell, a selling date. They don't really care because they're, they're selling it for spot anyways after they recover it. Right. But we could, if I was smart enough to pick the price of gold and, and know how and when the prices were going to move, we could sit on that gold for a moment in their vault okay and then say settle today yeah. and then we would just get cash from them less um so be the spot price less the refining fee less uh, the royalties that we have to pay on the property okay great and, and what do those royalties look like so five percent uh which is relatively steep but it's it's already permitted on the the core of the asset like mm -hmm. where that where the permits are right now and then two percent elsewhere so new discoveries it'll be around two percent um and, and it just came with can't do much about it We'll see if we can negotiate something in the future, but um, it's what we're paying, and yeah. people have made money out in the past, so I, I hope we can do the same. No, oh, understood. Uh, I guess to wrap up, you know, looking further ahead, um, you know, what what is really the, the long term goal here? Are you, are you hoping to find a new discovery uh, at the project? Are you hoping to continue mining you know, the original ore body? Uh, you know, what can people expect? Yes and yes. So, absolutely, we'd like to make some new discoveries, um, and the neat thing about having our permit. Uh, and that ADR facility is we don't have to find, obviously I'd like to find it, but we don't have to find a two or three million ounce gold deposit. If I find 100,000 100, ounces here, 50,000 ounces there, 200 here, we'll mine, we'll, we'll permit each of those as almost a quarry, mm -hmm. pop them on the leach pad, run the gold, uh, and, and profit from those. Uh, obviously, we'd like to find a big, juicy uh, two plus million ounce deposit, but we don't need to to make a lot of money from it. Um, we also do want to resume mining at some point in the future, hopefully in the near future. Um, but we also are going to be looking to grow not only through the drill bit, but through acquisition. So we're, we've, we've identified a number of different candidates that could be a really good fit. And we're looking for um, high margin ounces. So we don't, we're not looking for a 5, 10 million ounce gold deposit. We're looking yeah. for a smaller project that is, is manageable that has a high margin, high RR, low capex. Yeah. And I think that would be really complimentary and build um, build quite a cool business if you can get a few of those projects together and, and utilize the ADR facility at Borealis to process the gold from, from surrounding projects. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly very exciting time to uh, be a, a Borealis shareholder and I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, you know, more exciting updates to come. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, thanks for having me.